um, question answer time. So if you did have another question, it's time to put it in there if you haven't already. And what we'll do now is we will uh, get our panel back so that um, we can get these answered. So let's just do this. I will, I'll get that ready. Okay, so my, let's take the first question, which is, hi, when is the document recognition feature going to be available and it might be advanced? Will this be included in the next release later this year? Over to you, Stephen. Thanks, Grant. Look, it's a good question, um, that one. It was something that James talked to earlier in his session. Um, they are essentially the OCR feature is something that does require a third party. Uh, they currently work through, working through those requirements. We expect it to be um, a part of the next major release, probably in the um, around mid year. As to whether the OCR will be immediately enabled at that point or whether that will be a subsequent flick the switch and turn it on, uh, we still need to wait and see. It's a little bit harder to confirm that because it's not just about the software update, but it's about the relationships and partnership process that MIB is going through at the moment as well. Thanks, Stephen. The next question is, how often is the product updated and when does this occur? Will it result in downtime for the site? Stephen, again, I think. Again, a good question. Thanks, Grant. Um, we do have quite a number of releases through the year. As you'll have seen in 2020, uh, there were five releases. We had 2020.1 to 2020.5, um, plus some very minor changes as well. Um, those vary in terms of complexity. Uh, whenever there's a major release, um, certainly the most important thing is that we're work working through with clients. And NYB will notify you directly, as your partner should as well. Um, and giving you that notification that there is a, a minor release coming or potentially a major release. Where there is a major release, you make, might make the decision to have a sandbox environment um, some do, to do some testing of your own. Um, and the releases, the release updates are scheduled very carefully with the involvement of the client. Uh, so you can be heavily involved in that process um, and be you know, intricately updated uh, throughout that process. Um, they can be very, very seamless, um, particularly the minor updates. Uh, typically, they'll happen over a, a weeknight and you'll come in the next morning, you'll have no idea that that changed. Sometimes with the major releases, particularly where you have a customization, uh, you, you'll want to be a little bit more involved in terms of sandbox testing on that new version before that goes live. Thanks, Stephen. And either yourself or appoint this to someone else. Is the data in the cloud stored overseas or in Australia? Another good question. Um, the data within the MYB environment is actually stored through Amazon Web Services um, in a local data center, their local point of presence. Um, there is actually a lot of work that MYB has done around security and they've actually been ISO certified uh, to the security standard. And there's a lot of work that they've done around those, those sorts of questions about how they manage data. Um, they're very aware that they handle the, the data requirements of some very, very large organizations and government departments and the fact that we put our trust in them. So certainly uh, it's a big area of focus for the platform team um, and they have adopted um, very high standards in terms of how they manage that. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, next question, which reports are covered by Velixo and what's the process of integrating it with advanced? Let's leave it again. I might take all this one again. <laughs> um, so if you can imagine Velixo basically provides an add-in into Excel. In itself, we have a standard set of reports, like a standard profit and loss balance sheet, et cetera, um, that you can use as a mock-up example. But when you, after you've installed Velixo, um, it basically be attached to Excel as a um, add-in to your ribbon menu bar. Um, you actually connect to your site with your username and password and you're connected. You can then start using the tool with a suite of additional formulas that it introduces to get the balance or get the budget of a particular GL account or get a list of GL accounts. And you actually integrate that into your, usually your existing Excel reporting, which is quite a simple process. If you've used Excel, you will find Velixo a very, very simple process. Thanks, Steve. Indeed, I've heard Velixo users are happy users. Okay, uh, next question. Are there any other industry specific modules other than construction coming up from MYOB? 
I might handle this one again. Um, yes, look, there certainly are. Um, and we, in some respects, we take the lead from what's happening in Acumatica in terms of the industry modules. So at the moment within Australia, we have manufacturing, field service and construction are the three. Uh, we are expecting a retail um, edition, which uh, James actually spoke to as well earlier. So that will introduce some point of sale type functionality. Um, there is a commerce specific uh, industry edition as well. And in the US, Acumatic has actually started to position um, distribution as a specific industry edition for inventory and distribution. Um, so look, I, I think we wait with bated breath to kind of see what else MYB does in terms of ensuring there's that depth of functionality uh, for the specific industries where Advanced is extremely successful. Um, but at this stage, I'd expect um, probably if I was to put my money on it, Grant, I'd say retail will be the next one off the off the ranks. Cool, thanks. So here's one that you're wearing out your chin, or at least it's working very hard when it's so injured. So maybe you want to getting hand getting sore actually. Just, you know. So this question is: If I want to move from EXO, uh, so this will be an EXO user. How can I determine if Advanced is suitable for my company? You can appoint yourself or and rest your chin or I'm, I might run through that one again as well and, and Susanna or Ronnie feel free to jump in and, and add to this um certainly I think firstly being part of the MYB stable you know MYB has been very successful with their small business products through to their SMB medium business with XO and now with advanced very much taking on the, the upper echelon of organizations in that high end tier three low end tier two um, you know, we have a number of ASX organizations using advanced number of government departments. So it really does stretch quite broadly to cope with a whole lot of requirements of, of complex organizations. I think the key point though with that is um, the implementation of a new ERP system is an opportunity to review your process and make sure you're really adopting the value that that change can bring. Uh, we don't actually want to do a like for like replacement you want to review your processes and ensure that you're getting that benefits and, and really creating a connected business, uh, you know, taking that model. Um, so usually it's that process, that journey would start with um, engaging uh, with your partner um, and we can certainly assist if, if you need some direction on that. Um, going through the demonstration process and, and having somebody listen understand your pain points, understand strategically where you're moving towards and ensure that there is that match. And often we can talk to those other client experiences as well in similar industries uh, where you can get that sort of assurance uh, that advance will meet those requirements. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, so the next one is, um, about security on the platform. How do you stop users accessing sensitive information on the site? I just say again, um, with that AWS hosting platform, uh, with the high focus and indeed the audits, the significant audits that NYB go through, uh, you can have certainty that NYB data is, is very carefully petitioned and guarded um, across uh, NYB advanced tenants. Sure. and then. Of course, it has a fantastic uh, role-based role security system within it as well. Mm. Um, do we know when e-invoicing will be supported? Uh, the one from your presentation, Steve, by the look of it. Yeah, so e-invoicing is currently not natively supported within NYB Advanced. Um, at this stage, the approach has been that we integrate with uh, e-invoicing partners, delivery points, um, uh, expense manager, is actually one of those that can support if you just need supplier side e-invoicing and maybe Sharon or Phil, you can add to this in just a moment. Uh, if you need client side e-invoicing as well as supplier side e-invoicing that it might be most appropriate that you work with your EDI vendor or find an EDI vendor that can assist you with that requirement. Sharon, did you add, or Phil, did you wanna add anything around the e-invoicing functionality and expense manager? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, as I said in our, my presentation, we're very excited about, um, you know, this uh, e-invoicing. We absolutely see this as the way of the future. It is still very new, but we do have a um, an access point uh, through Oz EDI. Uh, so we can consume um, e-invoicing. 
Um, it is obviously a, an onboarding process for our clients with their suppliers. Um, but if you um, have, um, you know, for us, if we've got a client that has a lot of um, very complex invoicing, we would much prefer to work with our clients in this path. So we will work with our clients along this path with them. Great, thanks. Um, and Sharon, while you're there, um, the question I have is, uh, is expense manager fully integrated with MIB Advanced? Yes, it is. Yes, I might actually um, let Philip um, drop in there and just explain the, the depth of the integration. Yeah, I'll tackle that one. Um, so yes, Mira, uh, we are um, totally certified with MIP Advance and we connect there with the full API. Um, so that essentially means that all of our data gets sent directly through into MYB Advance. There's no need to export any flat files, import files, or rekey that data. It's sent directly across. Um, but likewise, uh, we receive a back feed as well. So it's a full two-way API. So not only do we send our data into MYB, we also receive data back. Um, so as you make changes in MYB to things like projects, suppliers, tasks, things that are changing quite regularly, that's automatically updated back in our platform. So you don't need to maintain two separate systems. It's a connected service. Thanks, Philip. So for AJ, quick question, if that's okay. How do, how do companies normally onboard customers in your experience? I, I think, um, Grant, the, uh, <laughs> in all like different ways, the way I used to do it was very manual um, and a little bit um, uh, ad hoc. So. I think things have changed since I did it, you know, eight nine years ago. Uh, I hope it's changed. Hmm. Um, and um, what we, what our vision is that everyone sort of has something that's um, representative of their brand and that uh, reduces errors and is like friction free. So yeah, that's yeah. Um, kind of hard answer that one. Sure thing. Um, next question: Do I need anything else to run this app with advanced, i.e., the API? And I presume that we should answer that for both the add-on products, um, easy click and expense manager. So. Anything else to run the app with advanced, for example, the API? Um, so maybe I'll just quickly answer it. Um, from our point, if you're using um, just the credit module that I showed you, the onboarding, it's standalone. You don't need anything. You can you can be up and running right now. If you want to use the whole easy click platform and you want to have the data sync between uh, MYB, then yes, you need the API. So it just depends on the extent and what product that you need. Um, Philip or Sharon, you might want to answer from an expense manager point of view. Uh, we're very similar to you guys, AJ, and I think maybe even Steve could expand on this even further. Uh, but we use a standard API license that's already included in, in MYB Advanced. Uh, we haven't had any clients go over that in terms of the number of calls. Um, there's a set number of calls that are included, and Steve, and I think you can confirm how many that is. Um, but in terms of the calls that we push, um, each export is only one push, so we're very light um, on that. And that API license can also be shared between add-ons as well. Just to add to that, perhaps, um, MIB Advanced includes a limited API as a part of the base license that you purchase. Um, that limited API is a single license, <clears throat> and it can actually be shared across multiple uh, endpoint requirements with the limitation uh, that you can't segment the security if you're sharing that license, which is something we, we do advise clients to be very wary of or be aware of. Um, if you're using that single limited API and you need to open it up for, for example, for easy click for accounts receivable, uh, then somebody else who uses that API also gets access to that same data. Um, so in instances where you do have multiple API usage requirements, there is a full API license available, which is a, an additional license module, uh, which includes essentially multiple licenses that you can actually secure down as well quite separately. Um, typically, for most clients, the limited API, API is sufficient. Um, in some instances, if you need to use that API for multiple uh, integrations, it is worthwhile considering uh, the purchase of a full API as well. Thanks, Stephen. It looks like the last question here. So we've got, um, it looks like it's for AJ. So how long does it take to get risk and credit applications up and running, AJ? Um, Honestly, the, both the risk and the applications you can have today, the <laughs> same day. It's, we know everyone's busy. We know you guys don't have time for more systems and more work. So it's, it's, it's meant to be simple. And, and the more you get into it, you can uh, expand on it, but you can up, be up and running um, literally today. 
Just a question, AJ, on that. So if, if we wanted to get that in at, at Kilimanjaro, do we need to do an onboarded credit application to get the credit applications? Uh, now you're confusing me. Uh, do you need to get the... Told you, uh, so, got concussion. I'm telling you, so Stephen, all you do is, uh, if you have a current application that you're using, you, you grab the T's and C's in the privacy policy and we paste it into the onto the form and you're up and running, right? If I understood Easy. your question, because maybe I'm getting confused. <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think Steve needs some lunch now, but thank you. That, that's great, AJ. Um, so I think we've wrapped it up there. And um, first of all, just remind you, as you close out of the session here, please, um, we'd, we'd love your feedback. You know, you'll, you'll, you'll have... Um, You'll have opinions of what was good, what, what could be improved, and we'd love to hear from you no matter what. Um, so on behalf of our sponsors, Kilimanjaro, Enprise, of course, our wonderful add-ons here, Expense Manager and uh, Easy Collect, thank you for supporting user groups. But most importantly, thanks to all you wonderful users out there who use the product. We hope that you've um, gained some value from today. Please reach out to you know, your, your consultants um, that service you if you have any further questions on anything that's been said. And as I say, you will get information uh, sent to you, uh, content from, from today's session. So once again, thanks for joining us. It's been great to have you. We hope to see you at the next one. And thanks to all our panellists. Good day. <laughs>